From the center of the galaxy, this is Force Center, a show about Star Wars, pop culture, and the ultimate adventure life itself. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsock, and we're here for uh, You Say the Name, and I'll Do My Dance. <laughs> and this particular episode is The Bad Batch Report. Ah! <laughs> That was a, a perfect uh, timed a bit of comedy there because I was like, hey, we're doing video now. I can literally physically throw to you. And I put my hands to the incorrect side of the screen to indicate <laughs> what in, well, you made your beautiful, monstrous yeah. uh, Lurka Hound roar. Well, no, well, we did that last week, and that's my problem. I'm trying to it, – it was more of a imperial officer being eaten. Shriek. <laughs> Uh, that was a really good one, as well as the stormtrooper being blasted away, which is uh, by the, the ship oh, yeah. taking off, which I'm sure will take up half of our episode talking about that beat <laughs> and the yes. wonderful noise that he made. Yep, yeah, yep. Uh, there's a lot there's a lot of great noises in this one, I thought. There was. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah. but we're happy to be here making noises, pointing the wrong direction as we talk mm. about season three episode four of the bad batch this episode is titled a different approach it is directed by saul ruiz or written by ezra nachman story editor matt machenovitz uh score by the whole kiner group uh kevin kiner sean kiner deanna kiner we like pointing that out because hey all those kiners deserve their moment in the audio spotlight uh ken we had such a great time discussing the first three episodes uh, we were moved by the first three episodes, but it was also just sort of like a lot to absorb, a lot to process quickly and discuss. Uh, what was your overall reaction to this one episode as you went in knowing that uh, there's going to be less to absorb? Did you end up <laughs> yeah. enjoying the uh, less absorption? <laughs> I, I did. And, and 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 like we said last week and, and Jennifer agreed and Jennifer at last second uh, um, schedule uh, issue and, and couldn't mm -hmm. join us today, we, we'll point out. Uh, we, I, I'm okay with the three. It just, I think maybe because I'm older, maybe because I'm tired. I don't know. I just, I appreciate one, maybe two. I had no pressure going on this episode. I didn't stay up late. I woke up early, had a nice bowl of cereal and some coffee and knew I had time to just spend all the time I wanted with this episode. So uh, old man speaking, I know, but I liked it. You know what? The, the, the food analogy strikes me as great is because sometimes, you know, you're just starving and you want to make that frozen pizza disappear mm -hmm. as fast as you can because the next slice only makes you want another slice. And other yeah. times you want to savor you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever use a fork and knife on a frozen pizza, but just cut it into teeny <laughs> bites. <laughs> and, and a burrito as well. But yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I enjoyed savoring this episode. Uh, I realized at 1030, hey, I'm kind of wide awake. I'm going to stay up till midnight like oh. like olden times. Mm -hmm. um, and I was made sad a little bit uh, again, as I am every day about the sort of shattered social media experience. Uh, you know, you're not getting the same experiences. People are spread across mm -hmm. eight different social media sites. Uh, but I did see a couple of people uh, skeeting, tweeting, whatever <laughs> verb <laughs> yeah. you're threading uh, about it. So it's a little bit of that sense of community, not anywhere near what it used to be for the midnight drops. But it was really, uh, really nice to just uh, stay up and feel like I'm watching it as it's dropping. No notes in front of me, no computer in front of me, just letting the episode wash over me, mm -hmm. go to sleep. Dream about Bad Batch. <laughs> yeah. Dream about space ostriches running over TK stormtroopers. Absolutely. And then uh, uh, wake up and give it a, a deeper dive. I think what I really enjoyed about it is that it was, um, it had some surprises for me, but it was also really what I expected and wanted, which was this connecting yeah. tissue episode. As I was about to hit play, I was like, I really just haven't even thought much about what's the next beat. And I was like, well, I, will, I think it's going to be about uh omega and uh and crosshair coming together with hunter and wrecker but how from what perspective how does it happen and what are what are we going to focus on emotionally in this connective tissue episode uh mm -hmm. so i was really uh delighted to see uh how emotional the episode was for something that that i think some people might just go like i was moving plot pieces around they had to get them together but is always just knocked out of the park to me with the emotions about seeing Omega's growth, uh, how much is Crosshair willing to change, all all that great stuff. And what I just delighted in, I was really, you know, waiting for it to cut as they escape from the mm. planet and right, right. cut to the credits. 
So I didn't honestly think that we would get the the beautiful reward and the beautiful tension in those final shots. And, mm. uh, you know, I went to bed with a tear in my eye and I liked it. Uh, <laughs> how did you yeah. feel about kind of what this episode was? I'll start at the end. This was the one benefit uh, you enjoyed by watching at midnight. Uh, when I sat down this morning, the thumbnail had Wrecker and Hunter in it. <laughs> <laughs> Disney Plus. So I actually, when as they were escaping, I think I kind of had the same thought as you. Like it felt like that. That I was like, oh well, wait a minute. We gotta, we gotta. That'd be odd if they weren't in this. So uh, all that to say, I'm with you in an episode that you're kind of like. This is logically what would happen next. I'm always bad at predictions uh, about what's coming down the line with shows because I just, I just want to take it in and see what's going on. But this one made a lot of sense to me, and it's one of those cases of your band releases your favorite band releases a new song, and it sounds like them, and it's kind of what you expected, and therefore you enjoy it even more because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all up for experimentation, different episodes, different approaches. I think last season, especially with the Crosshair stuff, delivered different things. The tech, a Riot Racing episode was a change of pace I enjoyed while keeping in, in, in line with the bigger picture. And and this was, they they are escaping. They're on the run and it's a character study. It is, it is even going into this season, we all had talked about, well, you know, Crosshair and Omega are going to be getting out together. And that's a, mm -hmm. that's a good pairing and we can explore a lot of things with that. It delivered and all that. And then, yeah, the ending uh, with, with the reunion, I love where it cut off. We'll talk about that. But the, the warmth there, the joy, the, the, the emotional payoff just for that beat, uh, I really enjoyed them to, deciding to do that here and now. Yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful, beautiful reward to a, a really fun and interesting episode. So let's get into the, uh, the ideas, Ken. Uh, mm -hmm. What for you was the big theme? What ideas were at stake in this episode? There's there's some some big overriding ones of of what I put down as a push toward hope that the Star Wars uh, you know uh, idea of saving what you love helping empathy compassion uh, comments on a transactional society all there all there but I really focused on and 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 and, and a little bit of my overall reaction is I love this this is one of my favorite Omega episodes this is mm -hmm. one of my favorite Crosshair episodes and that's saying a lot because the Outpost is still probably one of my favorite episodes of Star Wars television from last year and the Solitary this, Clone like I so, mean he solitary, had two bangers. Yeah. Last, yes. last season. Yes. It's like when George Harrison released one one or two songs at Tractor and the Beatles. Harris. He's Crosshair and George Harrison. The same. The same in my mind. The, the second season of The Bad Batch is like the day uh, that yeah. uh, Jolene and I Will Always Love You were written on the same day by Dolly <laughs> Parton. Day. Love it. I'm waiting for uh, Crosshair's All Things Must Pass album. Uh, but all that to say, the big thing that I took away from this, the big connection for me, was the fear behind change. We mm. always talk in Star Wars of change, and it's never easy. It's never to be treated as easy. But I thought this had a lot of just um, a, a bit of a rumination on, yes, through Crosshair, but all of us, where that what that fear is, where it comes from, and how that then manifests into other situations. Crosshair clearly uh, having to slowly release his control and situation and his emotions. And it wasn't just about this episode called A Different Approach, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. It wasn't just simply, oh, I put down, it wasn't about blasters, no blasters. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It, 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 it there was a uh, an exchange in both their ways. The great moment, I'm sure, it's on your list too. Of like, my skills aren't being used here. Noted. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't just simply crosshair finds a way to peacefully get through things. Uh, it, it wasn't simply that. It, that's there. But his his reticence to change. His reticence to change, all leading to what we see. The fear is like I, I, I ran out. I made a choice. Maybe I have some shame. Maybe I don't have shame about what I did then, but I've changed. Whatever it is, it's this fear of returning to love, this fear of getting to a new spot in your relationship. We all have it, man. I recently have made some changes in my life, and that affected some people being my life, and I'm trying to find a way back. And sometimes you're just like – you don't want to sit in front of them in a Mexican restaurant going – Sorry, I still love you, and I do you love me? Like you know, it's 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 very vulnerable. And this was a very vulnerable episode for Crosshair that exposed the fear behind change. Yeah, no, it is. It is totally that feeling of letting down your armor, and it's mm -hmm. almost harder to let down your armor to someone that you have loved and hurt, or loved and been hurt by. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and yes, I have some things in my life too. Like wow, yeah, man, it's much easier. Uh, to to face a, an, an unknown or kind of a scary or a new or you know this person is always difficult, then then you know what to do. If you're going into a situation where like this is always a problem, it's not fun, mm -hmm. but you put your armor on. You go into a situation where in mm -hmm. order for this to be good, I have to take a step forward 
but taking a step forward terrifies me because I know that yeah. feeling of being uh, in uh, he, I, he's, I think from Crosshair's perspective has been hurt uh, mm -hmm. by the, the bad batch, by the squad, by Hunter. Yeah. And Wrecker. Um, but man, was that shot ending on that shot of yeah. Omega being hopeful of like, I brought the family together <laughs> and yeah. Hunter and Wrecker being like, you, you sold us out real bad multiple times. Tech mm -hmm. is the one who had the heart to not give up on you. We went mm -hmm. along with it. It got tech killed and Omega taken. Mm -hmm. What are you, what the, the, just the look on their faces was really like you first yeah. buddy, you first, which I think goes <laughs> to everything you're saying about one yeah. of the major themes of the episode being Crosshair's ability to change. Um, yeah. it, it, and such a beautiful image of that at the end of literally your move, buddy. One one of the things I love about that ending, even as I hear you describe it in a little bit more detail, as you connected to it, is is I, you know I don't know maybe I'm it's safe to assume that we're gonna have some of the moments we talked about. Wrecker will be like all right, like who knows? I, I feel like they're gonna find some way forward, right? Wrecker might give him a new scar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe they fight first. Uh, yeah. That's that's my hope and that's my maybe my uh, prediction. Even if, yeah, they're gonna find a way forward. But I like that it isn't about that in this episode for Crosshair. We right now don't know. The point was getting there. The point mm -hmm. is him in front of them and him finding that way. And you mentioned it. I, I think it's easy to say, yes, Crosshair has done some a lot of horrible things. This isn't me saying, eh, from his point of view, the the Jedi evil. No, mm -mm. He, he made some decisions, but there's some, there's some, if you're just taking the Star Wars out of it, when he says, you know, a few times and he said it to them, you've, you left me behind, that's... You might be able to say, well, that's, you know, Crosshair, but X, Y, and Z, you did this. But from his perspective in that moment, it's true. So he's carrying a lot of that. He's got to let go of that. He's got to find that way forward. He's got to run. To, he wants to run to the spaceport, but Batcher's over there. And that mm -hmm. just is, 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 is his emotions, right? And, and having to go face whatever that is. So I like that this episode was like, the point was getting him there. Yeah. The point is all of us getting there. And what happens next? We'll find out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really love this. I think um, there, there's a lot of stuff with uh, Omega and about the state of the galaxy that I'm really interested in. But the mm -hmm. crosshair stuff is is so vital to the big picture story of Bad Batch, because what the disagreement between Crosshair and his brothers has been is uh, the rest of Bad Batch going, hey, the entire galaxy changed on us. We need to change, too. And Crosshair's perspective is no. <laughs> it's not nuanced yeah. it's yeah. i refuse yeah. to change i no. so deeply <laughs> refuse to change that mm -hmm. i will sell you out i will attack mm -hmm. you when you offer to pull me off of camino because it's falling apart i will say no and then blame you for hurting my feelings mm -hmm. blame you for abandoning me <laughs> when mm -hmm. you wouldn't leave uh, when Crosshair wouldn't leave. So, so much right. of, a, of of what his perspective has been is an unwillingness to change and one that is literally presents itself throughout the show in, in a in a physical way of literally not willing to come along. Yeah. Um, and so he's already gone through a lot of change we see by reaching out to the, the Bad Batch to warn mm -hmm. them that Omega is in trouble. Uh, yeah, yeah. To, to have that that amount of guilt to say I'm just a savage beast who can't change, who did nothing but hurt people. So just leave me here. I, I deserve to rot, which is the way mm -hmm. we interpreted his not wanting to be a part of uh, Omega's right, right, right. Re rescue plan and her insistence of like, no, we're going to escape this together. You're my brother. Mm -hmm. um, and he changes enough to go, okay, I'll, I'm going to escape with you. Okay. I'm going to follow your lead. I'm not going to kill Emery. Right. You know, uh, and now he's being asked again and again in this episode. The, basically, the question is, like, how much can you change? He's accepted that he needs to change, mm -hmm. that the Empire is not going to let him just be a soldier. He, he's going to be a corpse and a tool and a torture victim to them. So he's willing to change a little bit. He's willing to care for Omega. And then this whole episode is, like you're saying, him clinging to what he knows of, you know, I love that line of, I can take out at least half before they know what's happening. Uh <laughs> And then, you know, Omega mm -hmm. will saying to him at one point, watch and learn. Yeah. And there's this there, there's so much about that's about him trying to 
learn to do things a different way, a different approach. How much is he going to change? Literally, I can go my way and take the money and do the the brutal survival thing, or I can mm -hmm. put myself at risk and say connection and family is more important. But there's also yeah. this thing go, going throughout it that I really liked in the first three episodes, which I may be cruelly calling, calling the Twilight of the Elders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I should call it the Passing of the Torch. But just that that the show has shifted from Omega being a child who needs instruction and care to mm. incredibly competent, who has mm -hmm. knowledge now that they don't have. And particularly Crosshair doesn't have. When Crosshair yep. la last saw her, there's a real Han, like, energy from Return of the Jedi. Luke, he's a kid. He can barely take care of himself. And, like, you missed yeah. out on something, some stuff, Crosshair. She understands the galaxy way better. She knows how the Empire works. She understands yeah. how much greed is a motivation for other people. She she really can navigate the galaxy in ways that Crosshair can't and doesn't. And the fact that she says, watch and learn. Yeah. It is about him being willing to change, being willing to literally take a step forward and closer to someone else. But I think a lot of it is also about him having to sink in that idea of that change that comes to all of us with age of the world moves on and younger people learn things that I don't know. And can I change when you're aging? Can you change in this way that's accepting a younger person knows things that I don't? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should let them take the lead rather than insisting they're naive, which he does. Insisting your way is not going to work, which he does. And so, they come yeah. to this beautiful compromise where he's like, OK, I'll, I didn't know a lot of the stuff that you knew and you led us really, really far. And now when the time comes, can I contribute my old way that I that mm -hmm. I know how to with with your permission, young one? Mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. a really beautiful episode about change yeah. and growth and, and passing the torch. And I think it's going to only continue. I think this season really might end with Omega is fully formed in the Bad Batch mm -hmm. are the mentors who are retiring. Yeah, I'm exploding uh, out of my uh, uh, soul here with the uh, responses and, and add ons to what you're saying. I really love uh, where you're going with this. Um, the, I mean, again, going and again, apologies, uh, folks, Jen couldn't be here today, but like we've talked often now, uh, once she brought in the tale of, you know, her oldest daughter is predicting Omega's lines um, and connecting to her in a way that, uh, you know, maybe you, I, or Jen or others wouldn't because why would we? I, I was real powerful to me. I keep bringing it up because I, it keeps kind of hitting me in a, in a special way. So this is what this is about. And, and, I put down the note too. I, I forgot to mention it in my overall, but this episode highlighted where she Omega is now and all the lessons and experiences she's learned along the way, right? Mm -hmm. All the lessons are coming to roost here. But what you're saying reminds me what, what's so, so important. Have you ever like not seen a nephew or a younger cousin and last time you saw them, they're 12 and then now they're 21 and you're kind of like, what, do you like playing ball in the playground? They're like, I have a job. Like, <laughs> you're just like, you have to realize. I had a moment. I remember I played, I was playing softball uh, at a, like a church picnic and like, I was, I was like 12 or 13 and I was playing catcher and there was a play at the plate and one of the older guys, uh, it probably, I probably thought he was 50. Now he, he was probably 22, um, jumped in front of me and took a throw to make the play. And then <laughs> later on, a, a similar thing happened and he couldn't get there in time. And I, and I, I made it. I made the play. He came up to me afterwards and goes, I want to apologize. I didn't think you could handle it. Mm. And you did. And, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have seen, I should have let you do what you felt you could do in that moment. And, and I, that stuck with me. It's seventh grade. I'm like 12. Little, little Kenny thought he was going to be a major league baseball player. And I was like, well, of course I can do it. But um, I mean, a lot, there's a lot of that going on. Oh, uh, uh, Crosshair's not there yet. He maybe hasn't come to the apology moment with her. And I think that's a lot about what Crosshair is. I think Crosshair, we all have that. This now attaches into a little bit more change with the, with the batch. But like, I think he's in his own way has said, I'm sorry. And that's where he wants it to end. And that's sometimes the easier thing. Mm -hmm. The easier thing is to go, I'm very sorry for what I did. I was wrong. Anyways, I'm going to go this way. Have fun. And that's why the journey to get there is important. But that's why that guy from my life years ago could have just been like, eh, sorry, kid. But he took the time to say, that was your moment that you were capable of. And I, I assumed you couldn't. And mm -hmm. I think we're seeing Omega is just taking that. That's the the batch hunter. We five times we went, went around this galaxy, but you found us. Yeah. I think that's absolutely at the core of it. In in the way Hunter and Wrecker are saying it is like in this beautiful awe of this mm -hmm. child who is becoming an adult. In that, like 
that there's that there's pride there's like chip off the old yeah. block of like we want we want you to know that we did not give up on you across the galaxy four times looking for you five but you're mm -hmm. the one who found us because you're so great which is a little mm -hmm. contrast to like Cr crosshair is ultimately pretty great to omega in this episode yes but he doesn't he, ha he doesn't see her he doesn't know her he doesn't know her skill set she doesn't he doesn't know how much she's surpassed her mentors up to a point you know yeah, and I agree, and, and and I don't know even why I'm insistent on highlighting it, but even in my notes of just like, it's not again, it's not that she's like, the children are the way. Let let, let us teach you. <laughs> I got the future. She still has to learn. She's still a, a thing in progress. So it's like, yeah, if she if they'd stayed at that ship trying to replace re repair it, things might have been different. Uh, you know, if, if if she, you know, you know what I mean. Like like it, she, it wasn't like yeah. she's 100 percent right. That's why I love the noted moment because it's like. All right, cool. I, I I really trust you, but don't forget, I I bring some things to the table that we might need, and I like that about that uh, about the Omega stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think from Omega's perspective, I have some thoughts on you know why it is so great that that the moment where she's like, okay, now your way. <laughs> yes, so she, she's not telling him he he's wrong. She's not telling him not to eat that. She's telling him there's a bigger buffet. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it, for for the crosshair thing, I just think it's it's a it is a really beautiful, elegant episode because I think he's just a character who just there's the, the thing he loves more than anything is stasis. It's things mm -hmm. stay in the same, and he is dealing with the uh, a change in relationship with Omega. He's dealing with a change in time. He's dealing with a change in the galaxy. He hasn't been he hasn't done this. He hasn't run mm -hmm. around under imperial rule and navigate around all the bullshit. He's yeah. never done this in all of his missions. Um, mm -hmm. So he he's changing there. And it all builds that great episode of like, uh, or image at the end of the episode of Crosshair, you've come this far. Are you able to take a step forward? Because it really feels like Hunter and Wrecker need him to step forward and say mm -hmm. something. Yeah. You know? And I do think he's going to stick around. I, I do think yeah. that Omega is going to force the issue on totally. him all. Totally. Yeah. Um, I'd love to talk about the the Omega side of it a little bit. Um, yeah. Because you, you mentioned a, a, a you know a bunch of things about um, you know her understanding of uh, uh, the galaxy being all about um, numbers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, transactional uh, society. Transactional society. There you go. Those are the good words you, you used. I really felt like this episode in a lot of ways was about this idea of what is Omega's value and mm -hmm. the villains trying to make it transactional and, and quantifiable mm -hmm. um, that obviously it's just, it's moving plot stuff forward, the conversation with Hemlock and Nala But to me, the central emotional thing is Hemlock sees Omega as a, a tool, a, a resource, and he can't fathom that Nala say cares about omega mm -hmm. it, and he he said mm -hmm. to lina i never understood your attachment to the young clone but now it's clear why you kept her so close because his motivation right. in tracking her down wasn't that he thought she was some great you know forward movement in cloning technology she was an emotional uh, mm -hmm. uh leverage to get nala say to work because i'll say was refusing to work so that he mm -hmm. always saw her as a pawn but then he was always really confused like like I, okay i guess if you care about her in <laughs> the fact that he's like, aha, you never cared about her. And I'll say mm -hmm. she has transactional value as a resource, as a tool. That's a great um, point. And then that the back and forth with uh, Captain Man, <laughs> just the Imperial's name. <laughs> yeah. And shout out, shout out to Harry Lloyd of Harry Sarah Stargarian from season one of Game of Thrones. And great a job. beautiful creep in a Doctor Who two-parter uh, called yeah. Human Nature Family of Blood. Beautiful Love. creep. Yeah. Anyway, well, I was gonna, as I say, if, if we ever get you to try Doctor Who, the, the you you watch <laughs> that two parter. Just yeah. Start with that. Got it. He's beautifully creepy. Beautifully creepy in that. Uh, yeah. So, but Captain Man, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on with that, which which I want to talk about. But it is also like her value is that little lady can't be good at cards, vibe. But as soon as she mm -hmm. is, then it's he's literally extracting value from her, like financial, right? Transactional value. So it's all of all the yeah. baddies are reducing her to what can I extract from her mm -hmm. transactionally? Mm -hmm. Whereas through Crosshair's eyes, and honestly, I think a little bit of the audience's eyes, uh, we see that her value is that she has become incredibly skilled, resourceful, knowledgeable, mm -hmm. creative. She understands the galaxy. She's not being naive. She's not being like mm -hmm. she has been in some seasons when 
Hunter yeah. and Wrecker. Like, you can't trust that person. This is not not nice, but we got to do this thing. She's like, yeah, it's unfortunate. I need to scam people <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> by being a card shark. <laughs> uh, but I know that greed is, I know that transactional mm-hmm. stuff is the way that the galaxy mm-hmm. works. So, mm-hmm. uh, so there's all these sort of like, you aren't naive. You're incredibly savvy and uh, worldly, galaxy. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but then the heart of the episode to me is that her, if the question is what is Omega's value, it's his great Star Wars answer of her greatest strength being uh, compassion and connection, right? Her, yeah. her entire focus from the beginning is contact Hunter and Wrecker because I want to be back with them compassion and connection she wants to get the tantus information uh yeah. not to destroy the base or expose what the empire do- is doing but we left the other prisoners behind you know yeah. central part of the episode that she won't uh, leave batcher uh she's not trying to do things her way just to do them it's because she doesn't want to hurt anyone she literally mm-hmm. says i don't want to hurt anyone um mm-hmm. and then i think the way it all kind of comes together is that none of this she has reason to be proud of herself, reason to be egotistical or cocky, mm-hmm. but she isn't cocky. Mm-hmm. She's really focused on, I want connection. I want compassion. I want to rescue the people that I need to rescue. I want to be with the people that I need to be with. I don't want to hurt anybody along the way I- unless mm-hmm. my hand is absolutely forced. And then when I need help, there's no strident you were locked up <laughs> you know yeah. being tortured crosshair you don't understand how the galaxy works you don't know how much i know it's mm. when i need help i gladly ask for it so it's yeah. this very centered balanced um thing that i think is hard for sometimes people to pull off in the real world of i see my value i own my value i value my skills and i'm happy to ask for help when i need it she says she makes a point of rescuing Batcher because they never would have escaped without Batcher. She's happy mm-hmm. to give Batcher the credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Hunter just wants to compliment her of like, how did you escape? Her first thought is, I had help. It's this great picture of somebody who is confident, but also totally willing to take help and acknowledge help without fear that it lessens her. It's a very big Star Wars lesson in community. I love uh, what you're saying, and I'm and I had highlighted during the episode uh, and, and and asking, you know, almost to you, like I, I think this kind of falls into it. I I, did, I picked up on anytime an amount of money was given to her, anytime uh, the value of something was given to her, she kind of blew past it and mm-hmm. kept herself through it. All right, ten thousand credits. That's stupid, but <laughs> I don't care. Right, I, mean, I, I got what I need. Fine. And I'm not saying it's some socialist statement on here, man. Take your money to it's like, got it. Street urchin says, hey, yeah, you got some. Info. How much? Like, cool. Great. That's I'm not worried about this number. I'm, I'm worried about the bigger picture. And that, and, and 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 even what you said at the end with Hunter and, and her giving credit and so readily giving credit, not ready mm-hmm. to, to give up on Batcher. Because also, why would you? I'd be upset if Crosshair made her do that. Uh, it's just, yeah, blowing past this concept of the transactional society around her. Yeah. No, I love that. It was, it was a powerful thing for me when I, I was doing uh, a lot of theater and, and trying mm-hmm. to find the right people that I wanted to work with and, and how to uh, articulate it. And, and I eventually came to kind of an understanding of, I want people who agree with me what, what the goal is, which is we want to do, put on a really good show that entertains people, makes people think, makes them laugh. And it, then it's a reciprocal thing. Of course, I mm-hmm. feel good when people like my show and laugh. Of course, yeah. my ego is involved, but yeah. I want it to be good for all the people I'm working with. And I and the whole goal is do a good show so I feel good and the audience feels good. But along yeah. the way, there's all these transactional distractions of mm. even mm. different actors thinking like, do I get a bigger laugh than this actor? Right. Am I in this enough? Am I big enough on the postcard? Is there mm-hmm. someone important coming to the show? And that's okay. the only thing I care about. Like that, that this idea that we can have in life of, of being aligned on what is the goal that is both uh, uh, valuable mm-hmm. to our egos, but also larger than ourselves. And are we aligned on the goal or mm-hmm. are we distracted along the way? Do you want yeah. a car to get somewhere? 
or do you need a car that shows your status? <laughs> yeah. Like nothing wrong with people. I have friends who collect Corvettes and it's super yeah, cool. Yeah. But but you you know the, the difference when somebody yes. is yes. is it's all just about status along the way. Even the way Captain Man says, I own this town. Yeah. It's all about status and power. And there's there's no I feel like if you asked him, Well, why? Why do you want to own a town? What's the goal of that? Mm -hmm. He would sputter and shoot you because the yeah. why is just him. It's just power. Yeah. It's just control. Yeah. Yeah. Great way to look at what's going on in the Empire. Another great, uh, you know, state of the galaxy kind of episode here. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, too, because I know what you mean. I, I once had an old boss who gathered all of us around and was like, I'm thinking of getting a Porsche. Should I? And everyone <laughs> went, no. No, you shouldn't get a Porsche. <laughs> There's no need for that in Burbank. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I um, love a, a business meeting. Like, important, important talk. This can't be an email. Should I get a Porsche? Uh, yeah, you can, you you all... can sense it when people are <laughs> are sort of like. And again, it like like Omega yeah. in this episode. She's not egoless, and she shouldn't be. I don't think. Yeah, I yeah, don't think yeah. Personally, yeah. is a personal philosophy. I think enjoying yourself, being proud of yourself, wanting to accomplish things, and and bask in, in the in the glow of having accomplished something. It, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. The part of it where it's wrong is where it tips into that's all you care about and you exclude and ignore others' contributions. It's it's why I, 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 I tell me if I'm off base here, but like this again, what naive you said she's not naive, she's not naive. Like again, she walks in that bar, she's like I could scam these losers. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> you know, Catch and Bolo and Sid taught me well. Like again, another mm -hmm. lesson she's learned. Go back to those early episodes where she's learning this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but this isn't an episode where she turns to Crosshair and is like, "All we need to do is put, you know, a pretty flower in the barrel of these guns, and life will, you know, <laughs> <laughs> will work." Like man you know, will realize he's wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this. And, and I wish that was the case in life, right? I really wish this isn't me advocating for uh, violence, gun violence, war, anything. But it, it, it's just the situation and getting out of it, and, and what is our value, you know, uh, here versus we got to get out, and all those all those things. Anyways, all that to say, like I, I I really agree with you. Omega is truly, and has probably come into her own here, and and is mm -hmm. leading, and I love that. Yeah, getting getting to be uh, very fully formed, and yeah, there's no. There's, I love what you're saying about putting <laughs> putting the flower in the blaster so, in yeah. the blaster. There yeah. is no like uh, sense of. But if we just ask nice, it really is like her sense of like might have to shoot something up eventually. But let's try everything else. Yeah, first, and when it comes time where there's no way, other way out, she doesn't resist it. It's, Crosshair doesn't have to talk her into it. It's like yeah, yeah, unfortunately. No other way to go here. Yeah, and 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 I, I like to, and I like when we spell that out into our own lives. This is, you know, this is a, a space wars franchise, and there's going to be guns and blasters and violence. This isn't, you know, this is more talking about those lunch meetings with your old friends, or you always. I've mm -hmm. loved your example of, do I send that angry email or not? Mm -hmm. This is what it's about. It just happens to be this high uh, concept, you know, high concept action stuff we're going through with blasters. It, it's. It's not necessarily that, but but that spills out, and 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 looking you know, for justice becoming vengeance, or or mm -hmm. you know looking for change, and it's a very Star Wars thing. We're just using these. Uh, if you're going to Mount Tantus, <laughs> uh, put the flower <laughs> in the barrel. Yeah, and it, it's it, it yeah. If you look at just the violence, not as uh, an allegory for violence, but an yeah, allegory for thank you conflict of saying yes. I have yes. tried everything else. You are asking, you are insisting on something I can't go along with. And now mm -hmm. we're going to have to have conflict. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Not even violence, but yeah, like now we have to disagree. Maybe now I can't talk to you anymore. Maybe I can't work with you yeah. anymore. Like, yep. Um, so that, that was the other big theme for me. And it is something obviously that's tracked uh, all, all through Bad Batch. We love discussing Bad Batch as a tour of the horrors of the empire. And it's, it's early, you know, years really? at this point like it, they've been clear it's been months since she's been on tantus yeah. so uh, how long this hot cold time frame is who I, I don't have a clear idea and i think star wars likes to leave themselves some elbow room anyway mm -hmm. um but i love this idea of uh freedom being restricted yeah i just felt that viscerally in this episode that this is what uh, authoritarian regimes do this is what the empire does is just choke you out of the basics mm -hmm. she just wants to get off a planet and unite with her family 
you know, that's all yeah. she wants to do. Uh, but we see the the uh, incrustation of the chain codes, which mm -hmm. were introduced earlier in the in the season. Uh, early in the show, we got to see the beginning of them. Uh, mm -hmm. The ships are being tracked. Uh, right. The manipulative BS finds. Mm -hmm. uh, the the literally having to cover yourself. Your face can't be seen because your face yeah. is not allowed to exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sense of in in the dark cold planet too. That just sense of just your 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 ability to move from point A to point B being absolutely constricted, mm -hmm. contrasted with what a bright, friendly, open, let's focus on connections person that Omega is. I thought yeah. this whole episode was really powerful in resetting that that feeling that Bad Batch has of the contrast of the constriction versus the explosion of light and joy. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was violence. But man, contrast the explosion, the 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 uh, horror of the constricting with the explosion yeah, yeah. of the animals being freed. This was some of my favorite action right. in Star Wars in a while where I pump my fist. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it started with like that great joke of Omega being, shouldn't we free all the animals? <laughs> Crosser being like, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, get, 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 yeah. help yeah. me out a little bit here. And but there we go, mm -hmm. there we mm -hmm. go. The explosion of what gets the uh, the Imperials. It is again the organic. Mm -hmm. They're trying to constrain all these animals, but just that sense of freedom. All the animals want is to move to be free. Uh, and some eat. real yeah. and eat and feed yeah uh real uh, this is this is a, yet another one of those episodes for anybody who's just like i loved andor but the rest of star wars is childish be like mm -hmm. check out this because yeah th these yeah. are the same ideas absolutely and even just in terms of the star wars that evolved to see this galaxy at this time and 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 the the claws of the empire have are in and and are are, are growing the, the the grip is tightening and and for crosshair to see that you had mentioned earlier him not having to be on the other side of this until now uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty powerful yeah i love that we'll talk more i'm sure of the the saving of the animals but yeah the, it, it's 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 really clear it's it's a bit of a reminder of the why of the fight of the why of the push forward i thought this episode had a lot of push towards hope that's obviously coming from omega's perspective um but uh, i think We'll see where the batch ends up. Is it? Is it? Are they just looking for a safe haven, or are they? Are they still going to plug into the bigger cause? That's something that we, we hangs over the the batch themselves. Uh, but it's a push towards hope, and, and you get to see the darkness, and and, and you know just a, a, a government that has no interest in it but itself, right? And you see, mm -hmm. you see what's going on. You see it growing. You see the. Uh, you know, cool. You get some. You get. You get a bar. You get some games. It's still all ours. It still fuels back to us. There's nothing for you. It's only mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, I really. Uh, we we've had a lot of you know in, in one-off Imperials. Uh, I don't think mm -hmm. anybody's going to be really clamoring for Captain Man's backstory or a, a <laughs> Disney Plus <laughs> solo show for Captain Man. He's a one, and mm -hmm. it would appear real done. Uh, we'll talk about whatever a beast ate him. But I really in enjoyed and andor had a lot of this too the specific imperial cruelty in this mm -hmm. episode um with him gambling but then saying gambling is illegal so i have to find you um and there there's a quote that's been going around on social media for several years now that it really made me think of uh and the quote is uh conservatism consists of exactly one proposition to wit there must be in groups whom the law protects but does not bind alongside out groups whom the law binds but does not protect mm. um and mm. i think that is um I, I i was like where did that quote come from and it, it, there's a fun story behind that quote where uh, it's often attributed to the wrong uh, frank wilhoit uh mm. frank wilhoit was a um a political a analyst but the frank wilhoit who wrote this is a classical musical music composer in ohio who is fighting with someone in a comment section <laughs> on a political science blog called Crooked Timber. And this this poor guy's giving interviews everywhere being like, I'm a classical music composer. You know, the thought isn't original to me. I just kind of coined it well. And mm -hmm. th this other guy's a brilliant political thinker who's not whole, and he passed away and whose whole life is now like, yeah, he was great. Didn't say that famous thing. Say <laughs> Some music composer did. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. 
It's. It also sounds like Tarkin wrote it, for, but but from the other point of view of like, isn't this great, right? Yeah. No. And I think I think that's what it is. And I, and I the reason to point it out is I think you know there's a lot of storytelling in Star Wars about the sort of um, the Empire selling safety and security and selling yeah. the like. Yes, well we're firm, uh, but at least the trains run on time, and they yeah. don't run. The trains don't run on time. The firmness is exactly what Captain Man says in this episode. The law is the law. And what he's saying is, yeah. I am the law and I get mm -hmm. to change it. The law is there for me to do whatever I want and be protected by being the law. Mm -hmm. And then the actual law is there for me as well to punish you <laughs> yeah. hypocritically. For I, I just I, I thought that was um, I was affected by that because it was uh, in an episode that is about just like. Uh, a young woman wants to go home to her family. The number of different ways she's ensnared mm -hmm. by authoritarian control. Yeah. I, this I, one I, was powerful. We always go back to that one of those Mothma conversations in Andor at the party of, you know, I, I fear what your definition of, uh, uh, um, I even forget the quote because we say so much. I just yeah. got to write it down, but you know the one at the party. Yes. Um, talking about Palpatine and his tweets. Uh, yeah, and what uh, a secure society is. I can't remember what the exact yeah. quote is, but I think yeah. you're talking about, well, it's, you know, it's a secure society. I'm like, well, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? And, and we, we we see what it means to man. Yep, we do, we do. Any other uh, big picture thoughts on the ideas of this episode? No, no, we, we hit them all there. And and like I said, this was this was a, that's one of my favorite Omega episodes, one of my favorite Crosshair episodes. I love the big point. Tying it up for me of just this was this was uh, the lessons learned along the way for Omega at all kind mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. now this season she's uh, she's ready to go obviously still lessons obviously still obstacles we'll see what happens but uh, I like where we're heading with her yeah very much agreed and with that we are gonna take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment for more Bad Batch back in a moment and we are back to continue our discussion of season three episode four a different approach of bad batch uh it's so uh fun to me ken we always in the in the second half of the show we like to talk about the canon the lore the connections to other stories the connection big star wars story and sometimes it's a real meaty part of our episode mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh thin thin gruel on the canon side i think in this particular episode <laughs> yeah um but uh, a couple <laughs> things i wanted to uh, talk about um uh Nalase mm -hmm. is trying to get Hemlock off the scent of uh, Omega's mm -hmm. blood mm -hmm. and saying the fact that her blood mm -hmm. was able to produce uh, a, a clone that kept the M count of the yeah. original blood sample. Uh, that result is nothing but an aberration like the clone herself. How are you feeling at, at this point uh, in the series about the sort of the mystery of what Omega's deal really is uh, in terms of like, was she made for a purpose? Is she an aberration with uh, value? Um, is there a big reveal coming yeah. that she has some secret skill? How are you feeling about the mystery right. of Omega? Yeah, I've seen that a lot too. I, I for me personally, as someone who doesn't, uh, you know, dig into the theories and just kind of wants them to play out in front of me, it's pulling me forward with some great big questions. I, I like the idea that even with, you know the, the 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 core of Clone Force ninety nine is that well that was a mistake but all right actually look at this they, you know they're 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 not the normal but that actually is why they stand out and that there be some kind of secret revelation or even just a revelation that's uh, not even known by uh, uh, some of the characters about Omega I'm interested in that but I I have a feeling it's all in uh mind there that she knows it all but mm -hmm. that the value is beyond that with that as well it is a true connection yeah no and the show has said lots of stuff uh, uh about it about she's an unaltered clone and that's what's special about yeah. it the show has you know implied that she is you know uh, defective but effective like the bad batch um there's the whole blood yeah. match and what's the deal with that so i'm very i'm curious about yeah. it i'm interested in it but yeah. i'm mostly curious and interested about it from a perspective of the show has been in my opinion so incredibly well written if there is any sort of twist of aha this was the mystery of omega it's going to be meaningful to her character into the state of the galaxy yeah. and to, to who the clones were and how how some of the Kami Noans, like Nala say, uh, 
really felt about the project. You know, I, I think it's mm, going to be mm, mm -hmm. what if there is some twist or surprise. I, I think it's just it, I'm looking forward to the emotional meaning behind it. Yeah, same, same with that. It, it's not just a, a stat on the card or a checklist of an idea. Uh, it, it will mean something, and 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 it, and it could, I don't know, could change Omega too, right? Mm -hmm. Finding your true purpose, and you know, that can sometimes be a, an interesting game. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that maybe like the other clones have really had to wrestle with. We were made for this purpose we took pride mm -hmm. in being the best of what we are the best soldiers and then that has been taken from we were lied to what why we were soldiering right you know we were lied to about the nature of the republic and now we can't even be what we were made to be and we're not allowed to try to find something new um mm -hmm. with that you know the bill being shot down in in the senate and all that so they mm -hmm. all of her her brothers and arguably emery maybe her in whatever other sisters may exist have this baggage of i was made for a purpose how do i how do i yeah right. make peace with that and i think mm -hmm. omega has more had the like i would i have a family and i didn't really get to spend time with them and mm -hmm. i want to explore the galaxy and i was locked on camino and, and her sort of wound is i will have my freedom mm -hmm. uh and i will have my family so it'd be very interesting to see have her have a sort of coming of age story that's like and actually, you were made for this purpose. And yeah, how do you feel about it? And who's going right. to control that? And how's it going to is is whatever your purpose is going to take away this freedom that you so rightly value? See, yeah, yeah, that's that's you definitely said it better than the words that flew flew out of my mouth like a like a, <laughs> a creature jumping from a cage. Uh, that that she be challenged and that it be maybe her purpose or her reason being in opposition of where she is and where she wants to go. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you marry the two or how do you do you not or you know it's it's not unlike some of the stuff with Ray for me uh, mm -hmm. finding out a little bit more of the picture and like when you do like that that, that can truly challenge you. Mm hmm. Truly challenging. Um, so for other canon stuff, uh, for fun, because there wasn't much, uh, I got my little uh, Oribesh. Uh, it, it's a key ring. It seems large for key ring, but I got this at, oh, yeah. uh, at Disney. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Disneyland and, and like to keep it with me. And <laughs> every time I, I uh, pause an episode to figure out what something says in Oribesh, I'm always rewarded by it being it's the most obvious thing you could possibly think of <laughs> in this episode. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the boxers with animals said caution and when <laughs> omega was unlocking the cages it said unlocking it's almost like they're like guys 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 nothing's ever buried in the orbesh it's always the most straightforward thing possible like glad <laughs> glad you got your cheat code out there glad glad you got your yeah. detection ring out there your little orphan any yeah. detection ring but it just says Ovaltine again. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Glad you got your Cracker Jack detective <laughs> decoder ring out. I, yep. I, I, you're, you're, you're smarter than this. But uh, I, I love. I have the image of you and some breakfast and a coffee and doing C, A, U, T. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> caution! In the I O N, look like an I O N. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it'd be clear. It's just forty-one comments or, or tweets, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you find out Quinlan Boss is alive, and we we get it, we get it. Yeah, but no, though I, the, I, I agree with you. That was the big one. That was the, in that Darth Vader comment uh, comic yeah. of uh, yeah, uh, Jedi unaccounted for that. That was an Orabesh reward. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah, out there. It's I'll out keep there, translating I, basic things in the hope. I'm of glad you something. do. I, I I don't have that bathroom pass. It's a gas station key ring right there <laughs> for the bathroom out back. Uh, it absolutely is. Oh my god, you got to translate this in Orbesh to open the door. It says bathroom. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, um, mm -hmm. other uh, kind of canon stuff. Um, Hemlock says you know uh, when when he realizes that they had been on the planet, track the ship and notify all of our mm -hmm. operatives. Um, how did you mm -hmm. take the word operatives? Do you take that like he's already got his laundry list of bounty hunters and we're heading toward Cad Bane and Fennec Shan and and, and Asajj maybe and, mm -hmm. and perhaps Boba Fett? Yeah, absolutely think that's what's coming and and I, and I like it. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. That's what Hemlock would do. And again, they don't want to go. How how official do you want to go through some of these channels? 
Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's that definitely. I, I like what we talked about last week of of even Palpatine going. <laughs> I mean, not everyone likes what we do here. <laughs> yep. yep. Keep it from simple. You you have access to the massive bounty hunter account. Just go for it. That's fine. <laughs> Here's your bounty hunter credit card <laughs> with Cad Bane's face on it. Yep, I <laughs> uh, love that. Uh, this is the only other canon thing I had. Uh, uh, we had a great little horror shot where uh, most of the animals were just running for their freedom, uh, but uh, Captain Man was grabbed by a tentacle of a creaking door and uh, brought in, and then the uh, hey when the uh, when the vicious beast crate is a rockin', don't come a knockin'. <laughs> Stay away. Yeah, not to imply that the what activity was happening <laughs> we in don't. there. I think it was. I, I think I think that was a, a a nice evening snack for whatever that beast was. Yeah, I had when I was watching it. The reason I put this in canon when I was watching it, I was like, "Are we gonna get a full full Rathar shot?" Uh, in what what were your thoughts on the animal? Oh, I, you, I, I thought Rathtar for a second, too, on my rewatch. Uh, that I was like, oh, do I have to go do a technical comparison? It looked a little thick, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, but it could be a Rathtar with the CC on that thick. I don't know. Um, yeah, I did go there, but I, I went to some mysterious, horrendous beast I don't want to meet. Yeah, I, I want kinda... them to live their life, but I don't want to meet. Yeah, no, I kind of like that it was just like, you know, there are a lot of horrible things in Star Wars that have tentacles, and we haven't met them all. And this was right. one of those moments where, like, this is going to be somebody's going to do a deep dive video or this is going to be on Star Wars dot com, like, you know, fact file about the episode. And it's like, this is one of those things where it's like, just enjoy it. I I because I thought of <laughs> as you did, too, is like, do I need to start Googling tentacles and compare girth? And like, no, yeah. <laughs> I can just enjoy the damn beat and enjoy the point of it. Enjoy the horror scene. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, this is why we're, you know, we're friends with Alex and Molly. We can just text mm-hmm. them. Hey, could you do a five minute video on that tentacle? Just yeah. could you please answer that for me? Yeah, the tentacle, the tentacle girths of Star Wars. <laughs> That's going to be a popular, popular video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, any any canon stuff that you responded to? No, no. Um, unless you count, you know, adding to the canon of just uh, stormtroopers. I absolutely loved the design of goggles on front of the masks. And the almost Luke Skywalker like uh uh you know uh uh poncho that so poncho yeah the, the yeah the yeah. poncho Loud. duster it looked like a TK yeah. trooper fashion show of like interesting yeah yeah, yeah. I, I I'm gonna call them loud troopers because that's where they were but uh, uh in terms of uh, you know uh, who doesn't love a, a new figure to buy and that I would I would probably buy that one. Oh yeah, no. I mean, Hasbro's crunching the numbers. Like, all right, how much is it going to take to model the cloth? And like, mm-hmm. uh, because the TK mm-hmm. Troopers, like, they will be out, I think, relatively soon, and that that'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we always love talking about specific uh, beats uh, because we we dive deep, uh, but we also want to celebrate all those just little moments that that sometimes mm-hmm. are how the big ideas are communicated or are yeah. just a part of the fun of Star Wars. So. Uh, we're going to smush it all I- into one big seg- segment. Ken, do you have uh, favorite moments that could be action, could be comedy, could be whimsy, heartbreaking drama, great character yeah. beat, whatever it is? I, had a, I ended up having a lot, and, and these, this episode had a little bit more whimsy than the last three, <laughs> which was for the reasons. Um, I just want to start right. I'd love to pick it off right where we're picking up right where we left off. I, I, mm-hmm. I love the crash landing. I love a good crash landing. Uh, you know, uh, I loved everything about that. It was, it was, uh, tense and it was a great way to start an episode that uh, you know has a little bit of a slower pace in terms of just breakneck action a lot of high tension like we talked about last week's a good thing too but I, I thought it was a great um, great beginning mm-hmm. I was really jazzed that like you said like it picked up exactly where it mm-hmm. left off yeah. um, and that you know is also one of my favorite beats uh, that I would say is a I would count it as is drama, tense drama of the back and forth shots between Crosshair halfway down the ramp. Is he going to mm. move forward? And then seeing uh, Hunter and Records faces not light up with relief or joy, but really get tense, get yeah. really tense. It was an emotional cliffhanger. And mm-hmm. I really hope that the next episode picks up. Uh, I, I bang on a lot about how much. I love that Star Wars was inspired not just by pulp, but literally by Saturday uh, afternoon, Saturday morning adventure serials. And I think a lot of the structure of the the Star Wars films, 
uh, particularly the original trilogy and the prequels have that. They don't have literal cl cliffhangers, but they're structured the same way of like, how mm. are they going to get out of this one? Yeah. Come back next week. Next week's boom, boom, boom. two minutes, but that sense of we just escaped this. Now there's this new problem. I love yeah. that sense of cliffhanger in Star Wars. So I love that this feels like a direct emotional cliffhanger of yeah. is Rex going to run and hug him or is he going to punch <laughs> him? Or are they both literally going to go like, you decide. You, Crosshair, you take two steps forward and be a part of this family or turn around now. Like, what? what's going to How? How is Crosshair going to get out of yeah. this one? It's yeah. Great. Yeah, we might have to put some bets down. I'm still at some point. I'm seeing a big old Hardy Wrecker hug, but you're right. I don't know. Yeah. I'm hedging my bet a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I love that moment. What were some other moments uh, that you got? Uh, I I almost put this up in the in the bigger theme conversation, but I love what you said about hey, these are the moments that build those themes that we love discussing. But I I love the forget the hound moment, and 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 when Omega's not, and it's kind of like. You go that way. I'm going, take the credits and run, kid. Uh, <laughs> Omega was saying, uh, I'm going this way. Crosshair has to realize that the, the, the same belief Omega has in sticking to Batcher, sticking by Batcher, it's the same reason he's here with her now, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it seems real, rather simple to say, but I just love how it played out. The, the, the back to her, the... the uh, uh, but this is right. And I... I, and, and I I don't even know if I want Batcher around. He seems slightly annoyed by it. oh Crosshair is one of those does I don't like dogs people, which always you know gets me gets me suspicious. But um, mm -hmm. I just love that how it played out. Therefore, it's a great moment for me that plugged uh, plugged right into the theme discussion. Yeah, I love the way it was shot. The way that Crosshair turns back and looks, but we don't know what he's thinking. I think we can pretty much guess. And I like that it wasn't overplayed. Just that beat of just yep. bink money down. All right, I'm yep. in. Yep. Um, yeah, and also just a, a, a great moment for Omega that's about, I think, emotional maturity. I, I think it's one of those things that's easy to say, hard to do, but it's just often the answer when someone you care about is just belligerent and just uh, insists on making a choice that you can't go along with. Like, I, I think in earlier days and younger days, uh, uh, Omega might have really made an argument, a, a, more of an argument. She said he's the one who... We wouldn't have escaped without yeah. him. And I'm and I'm going to get him. It's not a discussion. If you want to come mm. with me, great. If you can't come with me, then I can't change you. I can't help you. Right, right. You 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 go do you. It is a great beat for Omega as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Big win all around for it. Well played. Yeah. And, and and we've talked about too, just beyond just the beauty of the animation, the directing, the the shots, what they're able to do nowadays uh with all this stuff this is why i am and animation is a true art form uh, uh i wish it was as popular or on equal playing field with other things it's not always the case i get why but it's a great great example of it here yeah no absolutely i had a couple of just like great uh character beat moments that i like that mm -hmm. that were the acting of the uh uh animation um the ticket taker person says lucky i'm not charging extra for the creature and just in the background there's a great very doggy like yawn and head shake from batcher Mm -hmm. it's just so perfectly dog like i absolutely yeah. love that uh great a lot of great moments from batcher uh yeah, but yeah. one of the moments that made me go ooh out loud to myself uh at 12 15 um <laughs> the uh, imperial captain man asked her if she thinks she's good at this game and she's got that kind of raised hand and curled lip of like i don't know we'll see we'll find out <laughs> it's so good it's yeah, yeah. there it's there's like anger in it but there's also like card shark i don't know yeah, yeah. It, if you want to see if i'm good or not you're gonna have to find out with your money asshole <laughs> <laughs> it's so well animated yeah it's like she's like i don't know how many cards are in a hand i don't know yeah we'll find mm -hmm. out jerk <laughs> yeah we'll find out there's some great character beats there uh what else you got uh, during that, uh, this might be because we just did the big deep dive on Casino Royale, which is available on 007 Center on our Patreon page. Uh, but when the droid does the very, uh, <laughs> very exposition, three Eastern stars, the game is over. I thought of Mathis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leaning over to Vesper. There, there, it was definitely some, uh, yep, uh, card games always require exposition from someone. <laughs> There was also, I can't remember if it was animated, so anyone was really listening to the droid, or the droid just felt compelled to say, like, well, it looks like he's got it. Oh, no, three Eastern stars. She's got it. I'm trying to find where, where in my life I can 
you know, use this tactic or say this like at, a, at a casino somewhere playing, you know, he's hit three cherry blossoms. He has won everybody. Like, that's, I'm going to do this in my life as a goal. I think you would be kicked out of a Las Vegas casino, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, absolutely <laughs> great. Um, mm. There's a lot of great little comedy uh, uh, um, whimsy moments for me. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I could have written down a lot of the interaction between Omega and Crosshair, but I like when Omega has the wisdom to be like, we need disguises. Mm -hmm. uh, and she says, see, isn't this better? And Crosshair says, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's he's just such a grump, uh, you know. I love him. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can dive deep, but he's also just like, he was born yeah. uh, naturally, created naturally, a great shot, mm -hmm. and just an ornery M effort. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's he's yeah. I've grown to love him and appreciate him, uh, even as I hope for him to become better. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. that's what I'm hoping for myself. Yeah, I wrote a couple of exchanges of, of every second we're here, we're at risk, and then then quit wasting time complaining. <laughs> Good, philosophy. Good philosophy. I like. Uh, uh, and if you lose, well, I guess we'll be in more trouble. Just yep, yep. We'll figure it out. Yep, because yeah, it, it again is that sort of pessimism of like, well, yeah. that isn't perfect, and like, well, nothing is, so I'm going to try this. Yeah. Grow up. <laughs> yeah, look, it's not necessarily a big theme discussion, but just her kind of going, yeah, and then we'll we'll deal with that. Life yep. life is a serial adventure. You're yep. right. We could just stay and hide here and never move forward, or we could find out what's next. No, yeah, I mean, it's just, I think it is a big thing. I think it plagues mm -hmm. a lot of us of like, well, I can't do that. It's not perfect. Like. Yep. Well, none of the options are. So the other option is yeah. sit there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, it did, I, I was too invested in this story. Uh, the the When I watched it at midnight, when I watched it this morning, I just cracked up at that Trandosian throwing mm. uh, his, his limbs, their limbs to the sky and going, I'm getting crushed here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, talk about poker face. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm getting crushed here. <laughs> I'm glad you uh, brought that up because, you know, uh, it, it's this uh, high stakes game here we got going on, and 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 he's in the power seat. He thinks he's top uh, top trend ocean around here, and and the fact that he lost his cool that way, I, I there's some really great comedy for me in that. I love that. Imagine uh, the, the Shifra from Casino Royale yeah. wiping blood from his eye and going, "I'm getting crushed here." Getting crushed here. Oh, love that. It's hilarious. Um, uh, what else you got? I got a, a few more little things. Yeah, I got two little beats here. One, I you might have this too because you know we do try to watch with uh, um, subtitles on in case we miss anything, which I saw uh, being debated online. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that popped up this week about apparently Gen Z and young millennials do this often. Well, consider this me trying to stay young. Uh, mm -hmm. I there's <laughs> you you had to have written this down right when those those ostrich like things are running. It just says creature trumpets. I just <laughs> love that. I wanted that. I want that to be a song, a band, an album, something. Creature Trumpets. Oh, you know, I didn't actually write that down because I was too oh. busy laughing and cheering and writing it down as my favorite action <laughs> beat. It's, yes, yes. You know, we get both beats. We get the, you have uh, messed with a dark, horrible, powerful thing with a tentacle mm -hmm. of ambiguous girth and you are sucked in <laughs> horror-like and you are eaten alive, screaming. We get the dark. Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. so like the spirit of Omega. It's so like what Bad Batch is of this is a show happening in uh, one of the darkest moments of the timeline. And here's just this shining light that not only is it freeing animals, like mm -hmm. if it had been a bunch of fierce animals and they leapt out and they mauled yeah. the, the K TK troopers, that would have been like, that's real cool. The mm -hmm. fact that it was bonkers space ostriches, just like, Mm -hmm. Give me the dopiest, funniest design of mm -hmm. uh, trumpeting space ostriches to, in a blind panic, yeah, bowl the troopers over. Th the comedy of it, the contrast of it, just delighted me. Uh, it's like that's a great action moment because it's like the spirit of Star Wars. It's it's like you know the the Star Wars has got to be dark and there's got to be Sith and pain and, mm -hmm. and Jedi mm -hmm. dying, and then like Jar Jar and the Ewoks just. Ah, just trample over that you know trumpet, they trumpet over you the creatures trumpet <laughs> over it it's i loved it i <laughs> love that love that 
Uh, I have the the we we are definitely going to discuss the same moment. Maybe that's our final moment. So anything mm-hmm. more before that we get to um, w- d- what we for, teased earlier? Uh, yeah, definitely want to end on that for for just like heartwarming moments. Uh, that shot of Omega getting off the the stolen ship and staring into the open door and mm. the glow of the ship that is her home. Yeah, in the anticipation of seeing her family. That was just a really lovely, heartwarming shot, and and everything with that. The tears, so act well acted, so well animated, just a great heartwarming moment. Yeah, no, I, I think it it it, uh, it really delivered. Uh, talk about mm-hmm. good landings. It was not a crash landing. That was a great one mm-hmm. there for a moment. Yeah, that we, you know, kind of been waiting for for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So take us through the the. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest moment of this episode. I wrote down the note as Stormtrooper having a beat before realizing he's about to be blown off the platform by a departing <laughs> spaceship. Uh, it was pure comedy. Uh, it was it reminded me a lot of uh, some of the, our favorite battle droid moments. So for those who are a little bit, you feel sorry for the battle, battle droids through the Clone Wars who are just getting promotions and they get mm-hmm. squished or f- f- kicked off a railing. It just had that kind of energy to it. Uh, no redemption for this trooper, but uh, it just, it, it, it was, that beat was everything to me. Yeah, and it's part of the reason we talk about action beats, because sometimes there's just something like, cool. But mm-hmm. there's also just that, like, you you watch a lot of Star Wars, and you've seen people blast their way to a ship. You've seen yeah. people unleash animals to get to a ship before. So part of what makes it pop is not just the emotions, but just like, can we find a, a beat we haven't really seen exactly before? We've seen people bowled over and we saw it in Rise of Skywalker, but the way this beat yeah. was constructed with the the wind yeah. whistling around the <laughs> helmet and a, a little bit of resistance and then just, <laughs> just turns the you know great the, shot. Uh, yeah. just plowing off the 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 screen with a great yell, a great yeah. yell. Which it, this yeah. is also a thing I it's I, I gotta so, so uh, early on in the run of of Disney era Star Wars, they wisely, I think, retired the tradition of the Wilhelm scream because the mm-hmm. Wilhelm scream had become so well known, so easy to pick out that it can yeah. take you out of the moment when you you hear it and it just becomes a uh, Leonardo DiCaprio moment where like point at the screen, mm-hmm. Wil- Wilhelm scream. But they have said in interviews, we've got a new one mm-hmm. that we're using every time in in the mm. in the movies i don't think they're using them every time in animated series but that little yell that ha ah! mm. <laughs> it, it was so fast as like my, my ears always prick up of is that the new wilhelm that, that someone one? will eventually discover and then put all the evidence together of here it is in last jedi here it oh, is yeah, and, yeah, yeah you know mando here it is and kenobi here it is and bad batch you know I, I i can't wait for that yeah no that's 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 amazing yeah i love that fun little easter egg collection there uh yeah yeah no in this moment I don't mean to drone on about it, but this is this is one of those moments of this has human touch written all over it. You know, mm-hmm. you could type this into an AI Sora bot. Give me a stormtrooper being blown off a, a platform by a, a, a spaceship. It would not it take the time, you know, no. to, to really put the humanity into this joke. The it's decision, so the directing. Such a great joke. And it, it, it just like in one image, all of that imperial authoritarian control and being like, nope, freedom. Nope. What? Your cool poncho, Perfect. your cool goggles, none of it. <laughs> Where did none your poncho it. get you? Yeah. <laughs> well, was there anything you disliked or questioned in this episode? Uh, I uh, no, no. I, I look. I, I, I'm excited to to really uh, start ramping up. But this is four episodes in. I've enjoyed uh, what they've been doing. The high tension. Uh, not always the fastest moving of action. I know that sometimes it's associated with the Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've I've heard this, heard the complaint pop up a little bit last week. Those first uh, two episodes were a little slow, and that's a personal taste thing. It weren't for me. Love the tension, but I, I I'm like everyone. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I, every week I want to know what's coming next. So uh, we're gonna get an emotional reunion. We'll pick up that uh, that beat, uh, but I'm ready to f- get some bounty hunters chasing and some mm-hmm. ships whizzing and flying. Yeah, no, and the big emotional cliffhanger being resolved. Uh, my only thing I disliked your question is is a joke because I actually do think it shouldn't have been there. Uh, but where's uh, the gonky uh, hug? Oh, yeah, okay. No, I was going somewhere else, but yeah, we'll get to that. But yeah, yeah. there should have been a gonky. This <laughs> what, is what, the, what were you? It's it's quite it's almost Chewy and Leia not hugging in Force Awakens. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you didn't walk right by gonky. Like I see you're here too. Uh, what were you? What were you thinking? 
I put this down, and it's, you know, for those that follow us for a while, this isn't us angry in a car. I, I'm wondering if I like the line, sounds like a you problem, which mm. I like in real life. I don't use as much anymore. But when it first showed up on the scene, I don't know when it was. You remember when, you know, we were like pop culture phrases or how you do jokes show up on the scene. You're like, I like this one. I'm behind. I liked that one when I was younger. Sounds like a you problem, you snicker. I didn't, I don't know if I enjoyed it there. It took me out for half a beat. I think it is now in the pantheon of I threw up, I think I threw up in my mouth a little bit or Mm -hmm. he's behind me, isn't he? When you're talking about uh, saying that like, there are these things that become tropes quickly yes. they're legitimately funny and then the life yes. is <laughs> is trot out of them quickly you know what here's my answer uh mm-hmm. no i didn't like it but i also don't care that i don't like it do you know what i mean yeah. like yeah. Here, the, what, what i mean mm-hmm. by that is i think that um things that i think of as modernisms or slightly tropey lines are always they always make their way yes. into star wars they always do and yes. some of in some of them when i was a kid i didn't know that was a tropey line you know right yes and either it didn't bother me or i liked it um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so when they they come up today i just like yeah yep that's, that's a, good that's a part of the deal so no i didn't like it but <laughs> yeah, no but it's a uh, it's the you. natural part of the growth of like yeah, it sounds real modern you know yeah it, it, it you know this was in 2015 i think we would have done two hours on this and you got a boyfriend cool boyfriend right mm-hmm. now now it's, yeah but it just it's it popped out just a little bit for me but yeah, no, and yeah, there, there's sometimes in the in the books in particular, there'll be lots of modernisms, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and it, they'll yeah. make the uh, just yeah. go. That's not for me, but yeah. <laughs> on we go, on we go, yeah. onward, <laughs> on we go, onward. Yeah, and the burning question, of course, now for the rest of the season, the huge cliffhanger we all have to deal with is: uh, Will Batcher and Gonky get along, or mm. will Gonky feel like? I've been replaced when Wrecker's mm-hmm. doing, you know, uh, uh, weight training with Batcher and Gonky's just there. It's a good point. Uh, entire body. I was going to say a head hung, but entire body hung. Yeah. Uh, Gonky. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Gonk. is when you bring a new, when you bring a new puppy home. Yep. 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 Big question. Big question. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to touch on? No, I put a note here about Harry Lloyd, uh, but we mentioned up top. Mm-hmm. But again, love mm-hmm. uh, he, Harry Lloyd would have been one of my choices to to be an officer, first order or imperial officer at some point. Like, oh, oh. who would be a good villain in an officer outfit? Oh, Harry Lloyd, Harry Lloyd, absolute creep. Yeah, I hope you know what he, I hope he's in the new Jedi Order movie as like <laughs> uh, you know some <laughs> yes landed uh, yes. wealthy person who doesn't want the Jedi around. Uh, be yeah, great. Yeah, be great. Uh, only other thing I wrote down is just, you know, is always the animation spectacular. You know, I can't even imagine the, mm-hmm. the contrast between the early Clone Wars and how yeah. beautiful and yeah. believable Omega's tears were. Uh, but within that, I really like the design of this planet. Um, you know, it, mm. it, it reminded me of like, what if the Vazquez rocks were really depressing? Because <laughs> they got that same kind of yeah. cut and angle, but yep. great sense of it's cold, it's depressing, it's not being treated well by the Empire, it's beaten down, all that Love stuff. That. Love that. All right. Well, we wrap up, as always, with a fun question of if you could have a figure or merch of any character or anything from this episode, who or what would you want, Ken? Uh, yeah, we mentioned the Stormtrooper adding adding Poncho Goggle Trooper, Lao Trooper to the collection. That's definitely one. Uh, but I definitely... I, I'd be I've always wanted a, like an official Star Wars card game set. Mm. Like I, I, I have I, before anyone says like, I think you have it, too. I have I have the card game featured in solo set that came out. <laughs> the Han Solo stuff. card game. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have that. But uh, a good proper one with weighted credits. And mm. like uh, mm. I love uh, Sabak and all those games, and uh, and uh, I would love that. So the the game maybe this this episode made me think about that again. Yeah, that one it would be really really nice. Um, uh, as always, I'm on action figure watch, and hey, I, I would take mm. a, just a straightforward action figure of Crosshair. That would be great. Uh, but I, I this is one. Sometimes I make jokes, uh, and sometimes I'd be like, no, that would break me, and I would buy that. If mm. they put out a crosshair from this episode, uh, you know, vintage three and three quarter, my, my preferred size uh, of leave me alone crosshair in his disguise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 
he he needed to cover up his face more but uh, it just it was such a fun weird design with that like the the kind of the helmety shape kind of remind me of like uh, mm. i think like the the uh, some of the pilots in Return of the Jedi who have that slightly different yeah yeah, yeah a little a, uh, a wings or whatever yeah yeah, yeah 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 a little bit of that that kind of style mm -hmm. uh, but the way it was just all sort of bundled up was practical mm -hmm. but also like it added to the truth of Crosshair he is a bundled up guy mm -hmm. they established the cold that the planet was cold by seeing their breath but like Crosshair in attitude and in look all bundled up like that is like that looks like um. Mm -hmm a large portion of Midwestern men that I grew up with uh. <laughs> in Minneapolis. Uh, it looks like Crosshair's put on his uh, emotionally repressed winter weather to mm. go snow blow his feelings away. He looks <laughs> so bundled up and it's just total like, leave me alone. Don't want to talk about it. Everything's fine. Oh. I'll talk about the weather. I like snow blowing. Don't talk to me. I don't have any don't feelings. Everything's you. fine. Uh, it's, mm. It was so great. So beautiful. We need that figure. The Midwestern Crosshair. That's right. Midwestern <laughs> snow blowing his feelings away Crosshair. Coming soon from Hasbro. I am absolutely sure. Well, uh, we are going to wrap up. Uh, Ken, do you want to let know, let people know where uh, they can find us and anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, we're the Force Center Pod. Some of you might be swinging here uh, through us for the first time, either on the podcast or YouTube side. Uh, you can find us on Twitter or threads at Force Center Pod. We're on Instagram and Facebook as well, Force Center Podcast. Uh, subscribe here on the YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to check out Jennifer Landa's latest episode of Jedi Beat, taking a look at the weird side of Star Wars. It's a replay of an episode she put together back in 2016. Uh, but we wanted, to, as, as listeners know, we're putting the Jedi Beat back out there in video form and, and uh, really love that episode check it out uh also uh you can get merch at tpublic.com slash user slash force center support us directly at patreon.com slash force center on there is a shop tab if you want to check out our 007 center episode on casino royale we're going to be doing quantum masala soon uh look for that in march but it's uh there for all patreon supporters as well follow me at cadnapsock or go to my website cadnapsock.com for more if you're in the boston area first week of april i'll be out there with mark ellis doing some comedy and i might be dressed like cross hair and for a lot of ways. <laughs> sir take us home where can they find you you can find me on all the social media at joseph scrimshaw uh in particular i'm really enjoying uh blue sky and i think it is getting better uh by the day so if you are missing some social media connection i suggest trying out a uh, blue sky and if you're there uh come find me uh, at joseph scrimshaw you can also check out my weekly blog about creative adventures and trying to inspire other people to tackle their uh creative and life goals it is called finish your monsters you can find that by just googling my name joseph scrimshaw and finish your monsters and the thing i want to plug for both you and i can is band camp friday so uh That's this coming right. friday as we record uh how does time work um mm -hmm. friday mm -hmm. march 1st Mm -hmm. it's band camp friday band camp's a great place it's got has a lot of uh, music and comedy albums and once a month uh they give all of the proceeds uh, directly to the artists so it's a great time to support artists uh ken's band the moon angels is up there you've got ken's got some comedy up there i have several comedy albums and a, a, a creepy cosmic horror story called the beast that ate the dawn uh and for myself uh, anything that you pick up on Bandcamp Friday goes directly to be, be, me being able to make more films. So if you want to help me out with that, picking up a comedy album uh, on Bandcamp Friday is a great way to do that. And of course, check out all of Ken's comedy and music on Bandcamp Friday as well. Great. I, uh, yeah, got to put that in my calendar to remind myself to promote it on that day because it's a great thing. But yeah, good, good call. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So check that out. Thank you uh, for being here with us. This has been the Bad Batch.